the RDX plays in the premium luxury compact SUV uh, market. It's a pretty busy market, very popular, but this is a very popular vehicle in that class as well. This latest generation came out in 2019. This is a 2022. There's some tasty new upgrades and we're gonna have a look. This is liquid carbon metallic, so it's a new color for 2022 for the RDX. This happens to be the A-Spec Platinum Elite. If you're in the United States, these are Canadian cars, by the way, uh, that would be your A-Spec Advanced, I believe. So, starting from the front, you have the signature jewel style LED headlamps, your high beams and your low beams. You have the built-in chicane style daytime running light there. This is standard on all RDXs across the board. This A-Spec gets the LED fog lamps though, and this air curtain here is functional. It does go all the way through to the other side. Then the grill on regular RDXs, They've made the trim a little bit thinner now, but the A-Spec gets a sportier appearance. You'll see a lot of black. Love the way that this grill looks. First of all, it's pointed, but it has this 3D, almost 3.5D look to it. It really sucks you in. I, love, I, just, I just like the shape of it. And then the hood, it really reminds me of the Acura NSX and a little bit of the new MDX. Uh, it's very pronounced. It's got some nice curves to it. So great job on the front end. Coming out to the side, standard you get 19 inch wheels. This A-Spec gets specific shark gray 20 inch wheels and you do get a little bit of that special badging. Size wise, this really fits in line with a lot of its competitors like the BMW X3, the Audi Q5 or the Infiniti QX50 for instance. You also get power folding mirrors. You get the proximity key. You can see the mirrors fold in there. And the best thing is it works with the rear doors as well and also the standard power lift gate in the back, which we're gonna see in a second. You'll also see more black around the door surrounds. It comes all the way back here. It joins up with the roof spoiler, making it look like the floating roof design. And you have this little crease and this black insert here, and it kind of really tightens up the design, makes, makes it look like it has a little tighter hips and makes it look wider in the back. Open up that fuel filler, you get a capless filler, and it does say here that is 87 minimum, so you can use the cheap stuff, but it does recommend that you use 91 octane in here. On to the back, you have those standard LED tail lamps, as we mentioned. You got a roof spoiler, your third brake light is integrated into that rear wiper. Also, your rear camera, has a washer, which is really handy for winter months, so you don't have to use your finger to wipe that dirty lens off of. Now, the A-Spec gets a sportier appearance. You'll see this kind of a fairly aggressive black diffuser under the bumper there. Also, you get round exhaust tips on the A-Spec. On the non-A-Spec, you get rectangular uh, exhaust tips. All RDXs come standard with a power lift gate. However, one above the base trim gets you the hands-free uh, feature. I wasn't really successful using this feature and that's pretty common nowadays. Some are hit and miss, some are easier to use. If you own the vehicle, you'd probably be easier to use for sure. So you're supposed to just give it a kick. Of course, it's probably gonna work now. No, it doesn't work. All right, but for some reason, if I put my hand there, it'll work. Go figure. Anyways, um, once it's open, this is where it all happens here. In the back, you have enough room for the large travel trunk. I could go and put it vertically. It'll still fit. I could probably fit maybe three of them in there. We could go sideways, put a couple in there. So let's get rid of that. Nice flat floor here. On the left side, you have this fairly deep well. I love that for things like watermelons and jugs of milk. Uh, they fit in there really nicely. You also have a 12 volt outlet, but underneath the rear floor here, and you see there's a strap here for pulling it back up. You have a nice, fairly deep cargo well. It reminds me of the Honda Odyssey, the minivan, except definitely not as big, but I've used this over the week 
uh, so extensively, just throwing groceries in there, going and throw, throwing like sports equipment, tennis rackets and bags, and just throwing it all in there. And it's just nice that it just holds everything so it doesn't fly around. Underneath this cargo well is a spare tire for those that are wondering. And one thing that I would do if I own this is that it'd be really easy. I would put a, a piece of non-slip rubber or something on the bottom here because it's it's hard plastic and things will slide around it's really annoying every time you break or turn a corner you'll you'll hear this thing slide that your things slide around in there but uh, that's a, a super minor thing other than that absolutely love it close that up uh, we have 60 40 rear folding seats they are foldable from the rear so you have remote handles here we're on a hill right now and they're spring-loaded but no it won't work because we're on a hill but let me just give it a, a little push so you can see, almost full flat for that cargo area. And if, in case you're wondering, this is very similar in size uh, to the BMW X3. So let's close it up, by the way. There is no lock button on the tailgate, but uh, let's head inside, take it for a drive. Let's have a look on the inside of this RDX A-Spec. I got to say, it looks pretty smart, especially with the red leather. So you have red leather with suede inserts on this A-Spec Platinum Elite or Advanced Trim. New, uh, you get a flat bottom A-Spec steering wheel, if you choose the A-Spec, of course. You have a seven inch digital display in front of you. Uh, very classic gray and red gauges for Acura. I remember we had an Acura RSX at one time and the gauges have not changed. Very, very sporty looking. You also get a head up display. It's color up front there. And what's nice is uh, this system is equipped Let's just flick it on here with Apple CarPlay, wireless and uh, Android Auto. But if you use your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto maps uh, with that, it actually projects your turn by turn as well in your head up display, which is really nice. A lot of times, a lot of these systems only project navigation turn by turn uh, only for the native system so you do have navigation on this as well but once again wireless apple carplay that's a 10.2 inch color display on this top trim you also get a 360 camera and you can activate it manually just by hitting the end of the wiper stock there we go there's your 360 and if you hit it again we can change views let's say we have the front view to see our tires. We can change that. Now, this only works at lower speeds uh, in North America here. Coming back down here, we have your heating controls. You have buttons for the, the um, heat. Not a huge fan. I'd like to have dials, but it does fit in really nice with the, the design of this. We have heated and ventilated seats here. Here we go. And right in the middle, you have the big dynamic mode knob so we just we can turn that and when we get driving we'll try different modes out here and this uh, Acura pretty well kind of started with it um, the push button gear selector not a huge fan of it I, I still I've used them over and over again I'd rather have even a dial would be easier but I am a fan of the true touch system here and some people don't like it so let's go back home here and what you can do is wherever you place your finger on the trackpad corresponding to this portion of the screen for instance if i wanted to hit apple carplay i'd go to the left corner and just by touching it you can see that's where it's at fm radio i'm going to go to the right corner xm just like that and then on the right side of that that corresponds to the right items there so we can select different things just by scrolling past there yeah i think it's very very easy to use however when you are in apple carplay for instance that no longer works for the location you do have to scroll and it is not a touch screen so you will have to kind of get used to that uh, i wish they would actually extend it onto that you also have built in alexa if you are a, an amazon prime or uh, amazon user you can use your alexa uh, here to do certain other things it's a very modern design of this floating console below that we have chi wireless charging here we, storage area underneath this silver panel here i like this silver panel opposed some some vehicles uh when you have the folding 
panel it's usually kind of like that black corrugated plastic this looks so much better and this accent is seen throughout the cabin on the sides here above the suede they use lots of different multi materials here this is equipped with the ELS Studio 3D this also has a 16-way power adjustable driver's seat we have two different memories on here RDX also has this large pano roof it does open up and it slides and once we get in the back seat you'll see there is ample room back there the seats do not slide forward and back or recline by the way but you do get a pretty good amount of room uh, the floor has a tiny little hump just it's ever so slight other than that it's pretty well flat you also have air vents in the center console and two usb and they are the type c speaking of usbs we have a 12 volt outlet underneath this floating console there's one type c usb under there and under this sliding area, there is also a type A that you can connect your devices to. Other than that, that's it. Let's start it up and go for a drive. The power plant in the RDX has been carried over and that is a four cylinder turbocharged two liter engine. It puts out 272 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque, which is near the top of this class of vehicle. I'd say the top would be probably the Genesis GV70 and that gives you 300 horsepower. Now that's going through a 10 speed automatic transmission on the RDX though. And in Canada, all RDXs come standard with the SH all wheel drive. Whereas in the US, you do have the option of getting a front wheel drive and adding on the SH all wheel drive for a couple thousand dollars more. Power is it's quite responsive. Right now, we are just in normal mode. Now, if we hit the dynamic mode or turn the dynamic mode uh, button, we, got, uh, we have snow, which is going to reduce the amount of wheel spin. It's gonna slow things down uh, for you a little bit. We go up from that, we have comfort. Now, this top Platinum Elite does have adaptive suspension. So it's really gonna soften it up as well. And it's very handy also in the snow mode. So in the snow mode, it softens it up to, to try to get you maximum traction. But if we go into sport mode, first of all, you get this, this red display of these, this RDX going really fast. It is more responsive. The transmission is a little bit more aggressive. And this 10 speed is usually limited. It just basically goes up to eight, uh, gear eight when you are in sport mode. Um, so, you know, if you're not in sport mode, you can just turn that back. Now, if you want to uh, put the transmission just into sport mode while you're in normal mode, for instance, you can just hit the D or S on the push button gear selector. And now we're going to sport mode for the transmission. Easy as that. We had the kids in here for most of the week. They had no complaints sitting in the back at all. Seats are very, very comfortable. Once again, I like the red. It really adds to the look of it um, and they're comfortable. They are very, very comfortable seats. One other thing that I like, it's not a big thing, but in your seven inch display, in your information settings, there is the little icons of how many passengers and it will, it's easy to see who has or hasn't put their seatbelt on because when you, know, when you have kids, they jump in there and you know, sometimes you're ready to go and then they're like, hey, our seatbelts aren't on so I can see right from that display there. And yeah, it's, it's a simple thing, but it works. This is also equipped with a rear seat reminder in case you forget your kids back there, it's going to let you know. While we're on the topic of safety, this has the Acura watch, which uh, has a whole host of standard um, driving and safety features. So you get the, the collision mitigation, you have adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, as well as standard blind spot information uh, system. And that also has emergency braking and rear cross traffic. But new for 2022, they've improved the system. Now, the distance that it's sensing of vehicles to the side of you or behind you is four times more effective. So it's gonna give you even more of an accurate um, readout or you know sense uh, if there is someone beside you and if you should change lanes or not. So that's a big bonus. Also, this is equipped with lane keeping assist. And I gotta say, 
Uh, I like the system because you don't have to use it in conjunction with the cruise control. Uh, as long as you're going, I believe it's over 60 kilometers an hour, or around 40 miles an hour, uh, if you have that on that lane keep assist, it will keep you centered. Uh, and I just tried just to see how long I could go with my hands off the wheel. And it was, it was a long, long, long time. It was minutes actually, but I did not have the adaptive cruise on. I was still operating the throttle and the brake. I do like the size of the RDX compared to the last generation, which was a little bit on the small side. They, they really uh, made this, it's almost the Goldilocks. It's not too big for sure, but it's not too small. It's just, it has that nice sweet spot in it. Okay, I put it into sport mode. It does even change the exhaust a little bit. You have a little bit more grumble to it. You hear that? And the mid-range uh, torque is very, very good. It's almost, you know, 280 pound-feet of torque. But what I like about the RDX most, first of all, I do like the styling, interior and exterior, but I like the size. Compared to, especially with the old generation of RDX, that was getting a little bit on the small side. Uh, this isn't overly big. It's, it's basically the Goldilocks for size-wise for a compact SUV. It's not too big and it's not too small. Uh, at all for instance you know like I said it's similar to you know a BMW x3 or Audi Q5 um, however it's it's you know fairly quite a bit bigger let's say than the Lexus NX let's see there we go okay there we go that is to a hundred kilometers per hour and it, it has a really good pull once I'm like once again in I'm doing 80k and it has a great pull to it. Would I recommend the RDX? Absolutely, especially if you're looking for a, a compact premium SUV that uh, has a lot of standard features, that's comfortable, it's good looking, and it's not going to really break the bank. This top of the line version, which is the Platinum Elite A Spec in Canada, uh, runs you about 60,000 Canadian dollars which is much less in the US, of course. Uh, and, but it starts off under $50,000. And I think that's, that's a lot of a vehicle for the money. And that's why they sell a lot of these RDXs. There are, are a couple things though. Number one, it does not offer a hybrid um, powertrain. And some of the other competitors you know, do, like the BMW X3 has it in a PHEV or you have like the Lexus NX, and that also has a PHEV now in their 450H+. Plus, if you want even more performance from your RDX at this time, that is not available. Uh, there is talk that there should be a Type S coming, like that MDX Type S, and that'll be a nice addition to the lineup. So what do you think of this RDX? Leave a comment below. I really think that if you are in the market for a premium compact SUV, you, you want a decent size, you want a good power, and you want a good style, you really owe it to yourself to have a look at this unless you're looking for something that comes in a hybrid powertrain or you need more than 272 horsepower. So anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. It really helps the channel out and we really appreciate it. Cheers, safe driving.